introduce myself during the course once I complete the deck. Okay. So my name is Anil. I run an organization cloud enabled, uh, six year old organization. Uh, you can call us as an open stack company because everything we do is around open stack and DevOps on open stack, machine learning on open stack. So our use case, our love is still with open stack. It's, it's because we want to do open stack, we are doing more on top of it. Otherwise, uh, still hardcore open stack for us. So multi-cloud, uh, so we start with OpenStack as a private cloud premise, and then we add complexity by using one more cloud, probably a VMware vCenter. Then we add up AWS, then we add up System Center. Now what happens, if you are an employee of uh, ABC Limited New York, and imagine they are using multiple tools, right? So you have different portals for different cloud providers. You don't get single sign-on, right? So you people have to go to each individual service. So first I try to figure out, okay, do I have anything on OpenStack? If I don't have, I go AWS. As a consumer experience, it gets more complex when you have more cloud providers. So I wrote a blog around this around 2012 when I was in EMC. And uh, today what I'm going to present is what I see implementation today, right? So I'll, I'll present something which I did six years back, visualized, and that's happening today at, at in, in your industry. So I introduced a cloud broker uh, and the part of, I used to have a service called as BSC approach, like build, source, and choose. So if you want to move to cloud, I evangelized uh, in EMC about build, source, and choose option. So build private cloud, which you cannot source from outside, right? Then you source everything from public cloud, which you really need to, not everything. But the moment you add private and public, the complexity will arise, customer experience will change. That's where you need to choose someone called as cloud broker. So cloud broker, uh, the definition is, it's an intermediary between you, which is the cloud consumer of ABC Limited company, and one or more cloud providers. So basically, uh, typically we go to OpenStack portal, we try to spin up VM, then AWS, then Azure, correct? So when we introduce cloud broker, all the employees are going to log into the local portal and not to the respective providers. So that's the smart management we are talking about when it comes to multiple cloud scenarios. And what advantage you get, of course, there are many. So one of them is the single sign-on, which means each one of the employees can log in using like anil at abclimited.com. That's good enough. And that gives me access to OpenStack, Azure, Amazon, and System Center, all of it. So imagine your experience will change now, right? So you don't have to search for you search for a service, not for a provider. That's the first change. You have unified management across cloud. So as a cloud admin, it's easy for you to provision and monitor and create a workflow. If you look at most of the workloads, we need some workflow automation where user asks for a VM, I want my employee managers to approve it. Because in AWS, it's a self-service. You, you still can create IAM policy, but you cannot do a workflow there. Right? So workflow is one of the requirements. Aggregation of cloud. Imagine you have four cloud providers, you never run out of the resources when you do multiple clouds. Unified service catalog. Now, why do we go to makemytrip.com and not go to airindia.com to book a flight? Yeah? As in, I can go Air India, Jet Airways, many of them, correct? But why do you choose Make My Trip? Because unified catalog, single sign on, correct? So, that's the whole idea here when it comes to cloud. If you are as a consumer, you won't may be able to relate how easy or how good it is for the organization. But if you are an administrator, if you are doing multi-clouds, you need this kind of a tool. If you are an enterprise, right? So this approach doesn't help for SMB or a small and medium business customer. If you are an enterprise, like I have 10,000 people working 80 different countries, I have to manage the show. Just imagine those scenarios, right? So this is more to do with the enterprise customer. And of course, uh, you can actually reduce your service complexity for your clients. So this is how you can actually look at. So tenant A within your organization, let's say I have a DevOps team, I have a finance team. So I can set up quota to these guys that what they can do, what they cannot do, right? And then they go to the cloud broker portal, they are now having a product on EC2. So tomorrow you want that product go to a Rackspace or a Linode, anywhere elsewhere, right? So the portal experience won't change. What would change in the backends, right? So today I support four providers. I must start supporting 18 providers later. So that part will change, but the consumer experience, if you look at, 
today if you have wow air coming up right so he comes on make my trip but your experience doesn't change correct your experience remains the same so that's the main thing what you do when you look at multiple cloud management you should have a cloud broker portal and the backends can keep changing and the user experience would not change there so basically uh, this slide is about uh, same thing in english right now you look at the user experience you start with app you start with what you want that's the main difference you now what happens we go to provider and we search for a app if not available in app a we go to provider b provider c and provider d finally you now the ex user experience you select i want a windows 2012 then you select okay i need this vm to be spin in india data center then your broker will only provide you data centers which are provided that catalog in that data center so that's the main advantage when you look at building up a cloud brokerage and uh, this slide is important because we all talk about infra you know compute you know, we take the vm you know physical to v conversion v to cloud cloud to cloud migration but what we essentially we do this much of infrastructure to run applications right today make my trip wants to run his application not run infrastructure he is interested in apps so when you look at this area if you are having an application to be migrated be it private or public again you have scenario like retain so retain what is running legacy grandfather days people retain can't rechange just retain as it is right your option to retire you say that this product is anyways not going to be helping us tomorrow right so you just retire some application rehost it like you have some application let's say you are running on exchange on windows 2012 it's not that hard to go on aws launch a windows 2012 run your exchange right so you can just rehost your application don't have to migrate your vm in addition to that you can replatform probably today uh, if you heard about technology like openshift cloud foundry beanstalk app engine from google they are all platform as a service you say i have a java application i just want to deploy it is way you spin up a vm install jdk install tomcat then deploy the application then you set up auto scaling group like minimum 10 vms max 20 put in auto you know cloud watch monitoring for it all of that to go with pass you just give your application he will run it for you apart from that redevelop so we are looking at today when you look at microservices people are talking about containers and microservices very you know very common talks the reason is we are breaking the large application into a smaller application example if i am flipkart.com probably one application monolithic can't do everything right so we can have flipkart.com one web application written in python if you wish to with some web framework but the cart id management can be written in different language whereas the auto man software can be in different language so we can have multiple microservices making a business goal so that's the idea between redeveloping while re architecting your solution and saas that's the best way right if i am running exchange server today for a 10000 employees so in data center a i run my physical server one deploy exchange what if that fails i deploy one more exchange server the moment we talk about clustering we talk about having a shared storage so we invest on a shared storage again but we have multiple server and shared storage but we can't storm the tsunamis or the earthquakes of the world right so we build a dr site and build again another exchange server replicate the data right so this is all it takes to just allow you guys to send and receive emails if i were i can just go with the saas model office 365 right everything taken care by the cloud provider you just have to classify what can go on public and what can go on the private clouds so now quick marketing uh, i can't allow uh, without this audience uh, so about us we are a cloud and devops service company we implement cloud and we run devops automation anything and everything you are done manually you can bring it us say anil i am doing this manual i can automate it for you anything and everything whatever you are doing manually so that's what we do in devops and the cloud part we are specialized in open stack private cloud implementations So by cloud enabled uh, we have a knowledge base of last 10 releases we have installed them and upgraded uh, open stack we have 24 bar 7 team based in bangalore uh, we do have new jersey office but mainly a sales office there but india is where we operate everything 24 bar 7 and we are top 17 if you go to the global list of open stack foundation we are the top 17 why are top 17 is because we focus open source open stack 
and we are not big in size as uh, multinational companies, but in size as a capability that is where we come from. And strong production skills, I uh, will refer you my customer names. So, ATIL has Nexta Data Limited, I am not sure how many of you are aware, they have a public cloud in India. They have niche customers working with, uh, we did the consulting for them on public cloud on OpenStack. And uh, 5.4 years since inception only in OpenStack and 28 projects delivered so far. Uh, it is not my mistake, market was not ready. So, market is just picking up from 18, 8 months now for implementation right now. So, this is the uh, OpenStack foundation link uh, where you can find us uh, on the global list. This is our customer list. Uh, next time you book your flight on make my trip, uh, it runs on open source OpenStack. Now, slowly they are re strategizing it, uh, that is a different story, but say 10 months and zero support ticket running successfully. So, next time you book flight, just remember cloud enabled, right. And uh, Cisco US, uh, they have a small private cloud set up for US audience, the employees. It runs on open source OpenStack deployed by us. Solatis is a BPO company, we run multi region, you see Singapore, Mumbai region in AWS, such kind of deployments for them, uh, that is Chennai and Madurai for them actually. And we have one client uh, government, it is 3 year old contract uh, getting over in next 1 month. So, we are running that cloud successfully on OpenStack and uh, we, we, we are able to handle it. And uh, the big news would be uh, we are building the public cloud data center on open source OpenStack for Bangladesh. So, that is starting on November 1 the project. So, we are building clouds uh, open source based OpenStack private clouds, uh, public could be the first customer there. And demo time as I told you we are going to take 15, 20 minutes uh, quickly and we will get into it. How many have heard about uh, OpenStack? Everyone does right, all of us. So, cloud forms, manage IQ, jam cracker, no one, ok, no wonder. So, uh, you need to uh, understand when you actually go for multi cloud scenario, you need somebody outside this OpenStack orchestration layer or outside Amazon, right. So, I, I am logging in as admin, uh, there are many user privileges we can create actually, uh, but just now we just start with the admin panel. So, this is the cloud broker portal I have talked about, this is like your make my trip for your cloud, you know, a single portal just go and get what you like. So, when you get here uh, under compute and you can go to clouds and the providers. So, here you can add in few clicks you can add a provider which is supported by your version. Like you see here I have, I have added OpenStack and AWS, right. So, we can add a new provider by going to configuration, add new cloud provider. Just going to call it as VMware. You choose as in if you want to do Google, you can just add Google Compute Engine here. Okay, so, we need to give project ID, uh, within Google everything works on project, each project will have a unique ID. So, the only limitation right now is you cannot add the entire account of Google account, you have to add each project by project and then uh, you need to give the endpoints for it and you should be validating it. So, similarly you can add uh, many other providers and I will show you the interface how it looks like, all instance show up in one particular portal. In addition to this, uh, one other important providers which you normally use. So, we can try and use Azure, right and you choose a region. The only thing with cloud provider right now is you have to add each region one by one at this moment. That is basically based on the design. If it is Google, it is actually all the regions because Google is everything is global service. The images, key pairs, everything is global there. So, it depends on your provider, but basically you will have to add Azure, Australia East once, then come back to southeast and everything. So, I just added two providers as you see, uh, because demo we cannot do a keep adding providers. So, I have an OpenStack cloud running uh, with us, which is running uh, this provider. So, on AWS is another which you have an account right now. So, when you want to spin up a VM, you can go to infrastructure. You can see here all the providers, clusters you create, the host, depends on what provider you added, different interfaces will appear here. 
Okay, the data stores if you are done VMware vCenter, so all that can show up here. If you go cloud, uh, all that I go is to instance, and I can add instance to any provider if you wish to. So these are all the uh, VMs running already existing. I'm just going to use OpenStack provider for now. There's one VM running on OpenStack cloud. Lifecycle, we just provision instance. And these are the Cirrus image. Uh, most of you worked on OpenStack, you know you start with this image always. Smallest VM. And then you continue. This is just a mandatory tag, so you can give uh, whatever email ID you wish to. But you can configure email notification to an admin. And you can provide a purpose if you wish to. And this is a catalog where you are choosing number of instance, which you always see in Horizon, right? Same thing. And you provide an instance name. I'm just going to call it as VM02 here. Then go to environments. Here you choose your project. So the keystone projects which you create in OpenStack. Right? So we have admin and cloud enabled. So if admin project. So instance type is basically the flavor. Like T2 Nano and all that, right? Which you have in AWS. So M1 Tiny here. And the key pair you wish to connect with. And you can click submit. So if you're an OpenStack guy, so you know I pretty much what's happening behind the scenes, right? So here, I can control all of the workflows. So basically what's happening, this API normally goes directly to Horizon and Horizon spin up a VM. We can create a user policy where we can say that anytime customer chooses all of this configuration, this guy will hold it. And admin panel under request, you see the request ID. If the admin approves it, only then all of this is converted into an API call and goes to your horizon and horizon creates a VM. Because in OpenStack we don't have that workflow right now as a without horizon, right? So if you want to build it, you can already have a ready-made solution and this is not just for OpenStack. Okay? So there are projects in OpenStack which can help you achieve workflow, there are open source technology you can integrate. Imagine this you are doing workflow for all the cloud providers. So when you think of cloud broker, think of for everything. One single interface. Not like you have to have learning curve. Right, so why did Terraform came in? We had cloud formation for AWS, right? So we have heat for OpenStack. Similarly, what Terraform did, they just masked underlying code. They say you learn my syntax, it's good enough. Same thing here is what happening today. Okay. So this is a VM details. Uh, you can always come back and view all the details. It's auto approved. Uh, I have the OpenStack portal running there. It's actually on my cloud. Uh, I can't access the private IP from here, this portal. I could have shown you on Horizon that's actually running at this moment. And uh, next thing is Amazon.com. So most of us are family with Amazon, right? So whatever you have in Amazon, <coughs> The only uh, challenge right now is each region you have to add. And we can come back here and uh, go to providers. Yeah, so the VM2 is provisioned successfully. Let me close this one demo before I go to the other one. Yeah, so VM2 is up. You get pretty much everything what you uh, actually get there, right? So all of the details, the network and everything. You have life cycle, you can migrate instance, evacuate it, power options and delete options, right? So uh, just to keep yourself uh, for questions, uh, we have networks tab. You have all the network providers, whatever you create. In OpenStack, the floating IPs would appear here. So uh, basically, you get the entire topology. I hope you know Amazon where we don't get topology for network, network right? But OpenStack, we do. You see this? This is something every customer asks for on a VPC. 
So your VM is not getting internet. No, there's route table to go, subnets to go, look at NACL. You know, really you get the visualization of it. This is AWS network. Yeah, and all of this is available in open source. Manage IQ. Uh, there's nothing. If this fails, nothing happens, guys. Your Horizon running, OpenStack running. Got it? It's not like a single part of failure. You cannot provision new VMs with this. But the VMs you already provision, they still are there on your OpenStack or AWS. You can still go manually manage it on those providers. Right? Similarly, storage, uh, you have block and object. So based on what configurations you have done, you can manage all the block storage from here. And this is like single guy. You don't have to go to different providers. You see EBS has come up here. You got the OpenStack Cinder Manager. So all the block providers, like persistent disk of Google, would appear here. It's an easy management uh, in terms of that. Uh, I don't integrate with every cloud provider, but just to give an idea of this. So I'm pretty much done. If you have any questions for me, you can take it. Or else it's a long day, I know. <laughs> yes, sir. You mentioned that OpenStack has started picking up recently. So what caused it to pick up? Uh, Okay, there's a background for this. Uh, this is three years back, three and a half years back, OpenStack Foundation reached out 25 global experts. We were not seeing adoption happening for OpenStack. Uh, Mirantis, HP, IBM, everything started with automated installation, things started. But the problem arrived where operations started. We could automate the implementation, but not the operations. So that's where uh, 25 global experts were called in worldwide. Uh, I was one of them who helped out OpenStack Foundation to develop certified OpenStack admin. The reason was any vendor neutral guy should be able to manage any open stack in the world. So that's the goal of that. And then we slowly started seeing the adoption rate started because we don't have the skill sets to manage open stack then. Uh, when I started open stack, uh, she did mention I'm the first brain on the planet to develop open stack expert. Uh, the reason is I don't have training <laughs> six years back when I started my company. I had a one month entire training room booked, all the servers are just sitting there and developing all that. So OpenStack with VMware, OpenStack with Zen, OpenStack with KVM, OpenStack with Hyper-V, plus OpenStack HA. So all of this I did and that came out of it. So after that, we're just doing a incremental learning of each releases which have come. So adoption is because of skills, honestly. As in, I do only OpenStack or you can say I breathe OpenStack. So I'm like so much, I just quit EMC just to start a company which is focused on OpenStack. <laughs> you can count on me. It's because of people's skill set. And till today also people are still afraid of running OpenStack Cloud on themselves. They just want the vendor production. Believe me, the way I architect the solution, you screw up anything, everything recovers. It, it, it takes architectural decisions. It's not OpenStack is a culprit. And OpenStack started microservice, which you call today Docker, Kubernetes, where people are getting more uh, you know, full on on market services. OpenStack is a microservice architecture. Day one, anything fails, there's another guy to take over and everything is stateless. You know, entire OpenStack, the magic lies. If you really want to build a private cloud, you just connect your Neutron with VLAN and spin up your VM on your traditional NetApp or EMC storage. You shut down entire OpenStack cluster, nothing happens. Zero ping loss. You run your solution as it is. So why, why so afraid about OpenStack? <laughs> right? So things run. It's just that you cannot project new VMs. Right? But we can spin up databases on the back end. The way we cluster, uh, just to give you the context, we just build uh, two architectures, stateless and stateful, right? For stateless, you just put it behind HA proxy. All the APIs, Keystone API, Horizon APIs, Neutron APIs, and everything. So you look at, uh, this is our cloud enable managed open stack. Here everything would actually run on, uh, I don't know whether you can see it, but this is three HA proxy on three different physical servers. All the APIs are taken care. Then we have three MariaDB servers on three different physical servers with a pacemaker and Galera. All the data is there on all the machine all the time. So we cannot have so much bad luck that two physical server failed or three failed. Today we don't live in that scenario, right? Still things run. And all your VMs are going to come and sit here on compute. They are connected to VLAN. They are spinning from, from a storage. So actually, if you just go and remove my entire MIME cluster, all the three servers you shut down, no worries. Things work. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. 
actually we on the cloud regarding cloud farms actually we are already running many multiple roles in work, uh, aws okay. okay so we can have to start from the beginning or we can get the all of this we can be. oh okay the amazon created roles which is like your iam roles you are talking or the no cloud farms yeah so cloud farm roles are specific to cloud farm now the user might be handled by him but yes you can integrate the ad okay With Active Active, if you integrate, then you have single pane of glass. Okay. Again. What about the existing node? It's uh, instance running in AWS. It does show up here. No, it will read automatically from there. Yes, it does. Okay. The moment you add a provider and a region, uh, sorry, I, I think I did not show you. Go to providers. That gives you the description of everything. Sorry, this keyboard has little a problem. <coughs> Yeah, you see it. Uh, region U.S. East. Okay. By region wise, you get to know all the things, like how many zones are there, tenants, flavors, how many security groups are there, how many instances are running. So all of it, the images you have. Okay. Okay. But these are your my AMIs, not the Amazon AMIs. That will be like list will be. This is the most expensive storage on the earth otherwise. Right. So just just give you all the info, and this is only pain right now is per region. That's because the way AWS is designed. But every AWS endpoints for each region is different. But Google comes with single API endpoint for all the compute resource. So Google is easy for you. Single shot, you can see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can also put this guy behind the HA proxy. You can have multiple three managed IQs behind HA proxy again. Because he's just holding the information what somebody else is providing, so uh, we don't have to worry about this guy going down. Your service still run, but we have to protect this again with multiple. So if you look at all in all, right? Forget cloud or anything else. So today's world we live in stateless and stateful. Only two areas are left out. Stateless, everything is going towards containers, more API driven, no information to be stored there. Okay. Stateful, what we have option? We have option to store in database. There are option to store in object storage. The objects. If you're Netflix.com, all your username, password on database, all your movie files on S3 kind of a storage, correct? So that's your stateful information. As long as those are available, your EC2 available, your application runs and fetches you the movies. So it's database and other things. That's all. So just try to now move on from uh, like we had three types: web, application, database. Now it's like web app. Web app is stateless. Everything else is stateful, and you take care of database. Then you have PaceMaker Galera to take care. So that will be better option. Any more question? Okay. So uh, we have uh, information on our uh, portal about us. Uh, we are basically into DevOps and uh, OpenStack services. If you are looking at building a 10 node plus kind of an OpenStack private cloud, uh, we don't have license fees because you don't own OpenStack. <laughs> we just learn upstream OpenStack. We take it, we deploy it for you, and run it for you. You can use OpenStack like a public cloud in house at your office. You don't need to have any OpenStack engineer whatsoever. We just come in online, spin up a VM, use it like public cloud. So we take fully managed service. On DevOps, we can automate. Let's say you have 10,000 plus employees worldwide. You automate patch updates on Windows, Linux, and AIX. We can do that. You want to install a software, uninstall software. We can do that. You say that your compliance. Every laptop should have Chrome 3.5. Somebody install Chrome 3.6. Within a minute, a notification to your manager I can send, and within a minute I can trigger uninstall of that 3.6 and install 3.5. So we can do that for you. Yeah. So just imagine anything you're doing manually. Just come to us. We we'll automate it. Coding is my job. Don't have to worry. Okay. So we look forward for your support uh, in your organization. If you have anything on automation, that's a use case like a O plus two blood group, right? So everyone needs it. The IT automation part. Cloud. Few do, few don't. So uh, look forward to associate with you. And thank you so much for listening to the last talk. Take care. Bye. Thank you.